my presentation is on exercise-induced pulmonary hemorrhage in horses, um, otherwise known as EIPH. Um, so what exactly is IPH? Um, it's bleeding or bleeding attack within the lungs. Um, so this is the presence of blood in any airways um, in the lungs of the horse in association with exercise. And that kind of right there is the key word to look for, exercise, because it is exercise-induced. Um, and so the presence of red blood cells in those bronchial tubes, um, they can be seen in lavage fluid, which we'll get to later. Um, so to kind of lay it out and like exactly how it gets to the point of bleeding from starting with exercise, um, it's kind of a difficult process, but I kind of dumbed it down a little bit. So um, the horse is exercising, um, and then there's like high pulmonary vascular pressure. Um, and this is due to like the increase in oxygen intake and need in the muscles in the horse's body. Um, so like a resting horse will need about 16 gallons of air per minute. Um, but a horse when it's undergoing like moderate exercise can get up to 600 gallons of air per minute. Um, so that's a really big difference. And so those lungs are really, really working. Um, and it's causing a lot of increased pressure in the chest cavity and pressing on the heart as well. Um, so where's that blood going? It's going into all of those veins and arteries within the lungs. Um, and so after that continued damage and stress throughout the years of racing, um, it can cause thickening in the pulmonary vein falls. And that actually increases um, like the pressure of like the blood and oxygen moving through there because there's less diameter in that lumen of the vein. Um, and so the increased pressure actually leads to bursting of those capillaries in the alveoli of the lungs. Um, and you can kind of see that better here. Um, this blue area is the pulmonary capillary membrane um, and that's kind of where like the air is exchanged. Um, and this explains like the differences in pressure that are occurring and what's leading to the bursting. Um, so some symptoms that we see with EIPH, um, overall there's some bleeding in the lungs, um, irritation is a result of that as well, um, and also some inflammation. Um, and over time this can cause some lung scarring and weakening of those blood vessels. Um, and on the external part of the horse, um, like drivers can see poor performance in their horses, um, lots of coughing, it takes longer to cool them back out, uh, frequent swallowing because they're trying to keep that blood down. Um, and if it gets to a very severe case and their horses are internally hemorrhaging within their lungs, this can cause some respiratory distress and epitaxis, um, which we'll talk about later. Um, and sometimes, it's not very often, but it can lead to sudden death due to like a rupture of a larger vessel, which is really not desired. Um, and a lot of people don't believe their horses are battling with this because only 5% of horses with EIPH are actually showing blood out of their nostrils, which is known as epistaxis. Um, you can see that in this photo over here on the left. You can see that the blood is actually starting to exit out through the nostril. Um, in this picture right here, you can see what the healthy lungs look like in a horse and what lungs damaged by EIPH can, can turn out to be. So this is some severe scarring that's left over um, after some time racing. So what does the typical patient look like that undergoes like this type of um, kind of distress? So usually it's thoroughbreds. Um, quarter horses and standard breads are also pretty commonly affected. Um, it's just because of the large amount of training that they undergo and the strenuous exercise. Um, it also occurs in other high-performance breeds and um, equine athletes, such as like barrel racers and things like that. Um, but draft horses, it's not very common at all, but you can see it when they're undergoing some like strenuous um, pulling. Uh, usually we see this in horses that have been racing for two or more years. It's not super common in the younger ones, but at two years or older, they start to develop um, continued damage, and that leads up to bleeding. So how do we diagnose that a horse has this? Um, we use an endoscope typically. Um, after 30 to 90 minutes after they've undergone that uh, strenuous exercise, they're gonna insert the endoscope and kind of see what's going down on there in the lungs, um, and kind of see if there's any bleeding taking place or any swelling or inflammation. Um, and actually in some studies that have been done with thoroughbreds and standardbreds, they've seen that 50 to 60% of horses are battling this um, after their races. Um, and almost 90% can actually bleed after undergoing three different races. Um, so it's a serious problem that's happening to the majority of athletes out there. Um, another way we can kind of diagnose this is through BAL, which is bronchioalveolar lavage. Um, and we'll talk about how they do that, but basically it's just them collecting fluid um, and seeing if there's any red blood cells that are being broken down in the lungs. So this is what a typical endoscope looks like. Um, they can do them stationary after the horse has been exercised or they can kind of do it during. Um, that's a little more expensive and you need to have access to a treadmill. 
so I thought. Uh, but now they have this cool new thing called an exercise endoscope, which is super neat. Um, I've never seen this used in real life, but it actually stays with the horse while they're exercising on the track or in their normal environment. And they have like a little camera that stays on the side of their head and then the tube is put down into the lungs. So this is a super cool invention and I hope to see it in person. Um, so this right here is the scale of severity. Uh, so they grade it on a four number scale, zero being the least um, worst or like normal, um, and then four being so severe that they're actually seeing some blood pooling um, in the thoracic inlet. So that's pretty severe, um, and horses that get to that point um, are having really bad performance in comparison to horses at a level of zero. And so in this picture, you can see that there's like normal coloration, there's no blood in there. Grade one, you see like a couple little pieces, um, like fluid of blood, and then here you can start to see it's like starting to cover the outside, and then at grade three, it's almost completely just like clogged, and then grade four, we'll start to see epistaxis as well. Um, and so back to the tracheal wash and bronchial lavage. Um, so a small amount of fluid is put into the lung and then they draw it back out. Um, so basically just washing the layers of the lung and kind of seeing what they can pull back out and if those cells are gonna be in there. Um, Cause those macrophages are gonna be breaking down the blood that's in the lungs. Um, and so when they pull those out, they can see if they've had bleeding like recently or in the past. Um, and this is actually the background is what it looks like under a microscope. Um, and you can usually visualize this simply in the fluid when you pull it out. It'll have like a red tinge to it because the blood is in it. Um, but to kind of confirm what you're seeing, you should look at it under a microscope. Um, but here's an example of what it looks like coming out. It's kind of pink in color. Um, so how do they go about treating this? Uh, this has been kind of a point of contention and controversy so far. Um, the most common that I've seen used is Lasix. Um, but fluoresemide and Salix are pretty similar. Um, you can also use antimicrobials, um, keep a dust free environment low, let the horses rest in between training and races. Corticoids um, build up to training instead of just starting them off difficult. Uh, they also use nutri nutritional supplements, but unfortunately there's not really been any studies done on this to see if they actually work. It's just kind of an idea of something to try next. Um, but to get into like the main treatment they use, um, in the US, Lasix, Lasix is administered intravenously um, a few hours before racing. They put a cap on that. It's actually legal to get right before the race because it's considered a performance enhancing drug to some people. Um, and so they have a limit on quantity and a limit on like the time that you can give it. Um, it's basically a diuretic though, so it increases um, the urine production and horses can actually lose 20 to 30 pounds of fluid before racing. Um, which is a whole lot and can lead to uh, some questionable ethical concerns there um, and dehydration. So during that exercise, um, they're wanting to lower the blood pressure basically by using these drugs. Um, so there's less pressure in those capillaries, so they're less likely to burst. Um, so we're reducing the amount of stress on the animal. Um, but when we talk about like ethical concerns, which is why a lot of people are wanting to get this stuff banned, um, the weight loss, the dehydration, um, a lot of people are saying it's just used as a performance enhancing drug, so it's not fair to them like that they can't get it prescribed to their, for their horses, so they can't do um, just as well as those horses on Lasix are. Um, and it's also very rarely used outside the United States, so we're kind of the only ones that do it, and we're the only ones that allow it on race day for sure. Um, there's some other countries that'll do it during training, but absolutely not on race day. So a lot of people are trying to focus more on prevention um, and these little nasal strips have become quite popular subject to talk about. They kind of look like what people wear when they snore. So they kind of work the same as well. And this is a video to kind of show how it works. is called Exercise Induced Pulmonary Hemorrhage, or EIPH. During intensive exercise, horses can bring in up to 500 gallons of air per minute. Unfortunately, all of this air has to come in through the nasal passages, which is the narrowest part of the horse's upper airway. Part of the unsupported airway collapses when your horse breathes heavily. This contributes to big changes in airway pressures and can rupture fragile blood vessels in the lungs. Many people believe that if you don't see any blood around your horse's nostrils, that there's nothing to worry about. This is not true. Studies prove that all horses can bleed when breathing heavily but only 5% show blood at the nostrils. Unfortunately, even unseen blood can form scar tissue in their lungs. Although nothing completely eliminates bleeding, 
Flare strips have been proven to work as well as Lasix by reducing nasal passage collapse to improve airflow and reduce lung bleeding. Thank you. So you can kind of see um, that's like the thing that people are wanting to turn to now because they're saying it's just as effective. Um, a lot of people are hesitant because they kind of, they believe in the performance enhancing side. Obviously they want that because they're going to make more money in the racing industry. Um, so the prognosis for horses that undergo this um, and use Lasix, um, they might still have some mild bleeding, but there's likely no effect on their performance any longer. Uh, severe bleeding can always impair their exercise performance just because it's uncomfortable and it causes inflammation um, and prevents their um, oxygen diffusion. Um, horses can continue to exercise even when they're on Lasix, um, like I said before, but worsening bleeding can occur over time as those arterial walls start to thicken. Um, a lot of people say the best medicine is giving them rest and giving them time to kind of recover, but a lot of people are not going to do that because they're going to lose money in that time where those horses are not doing anything. Um, so this might lead to early retirement in some cases, which is not necessarily desired. Um, those are my sources. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Questions, comments about this? This is, I mean, a big problem in racehorses. Did they do a study that showed Lasix versus a control, and then did they do that, or is it another one of those? With the breathing trips? Yeah, well, no, with the, uh, the diuretic Lasix versus like a control with no Lasix, and then scope them. Yeah, yeah so Lasix, it does have a substantial okay. effect on a horse's um, bleeding in the lungs, um, for most of them at least. I mean, okay. there's some horses that it doesn't really affect them because they could be having like other issues, um, like we talked about in a previous presentation, like boring. Um, things like that can also be contributing to the bleeding. Okay, but it's proven that lacing is still. Yes. Okay. Other comments, questions? If not, we'll move on to Brittany.